Hi, it's Ms. Moore from the Metuchen Public Library with Take 5. This week, we will be reading from Onyx and Ivory by Mindy Arnett. You can find it in the library catalog by typing in Onyx and Ivory, and you will see here that Metuchen owns it. Let's start reading. We're almost there, Kate said, struggling to convey the complex idea to the horse. Although her gift allowed her to touch the minds of animals and to even influence their behavior, making them understand wasn't easy. Horses didn't think in words and ideas, but in images and feelings, a language much harder to speak in. Still, for a few seconds, she sensed something like relief from Pip, his steps a little lighter, his head a little higher. Then the road began to climb upward and the horse fell out of the gallop into a trot. Kate resisted pushing him back into a run. Pip needed to catch his breath and daylight still lingered, if only by a single brushstroke of pink on the sky ahead. Farhold can't be much further, she hoped. They'd been in the hills that formed the city's eastern border for more than an hour now, but this was her only second time taking this route and she couldn't be certain. The Mararad route with its lengthy distance and taxing pace was reserved for veterans and Kate had only just made three years as a relay rider for Farhold. Nevertheless, her instinct proved true. When they finally crested the hill, she spotted Farhold's towering stone wall less than a mile ahead. In the deepening darkness, the ward stone set in the embrasures at the top of the wall glowed bright as starlight. The magic inside each stone served a single purpose, to repel the dark drake packs. No one knew where or how the drakes passed from under the earth to the surface, but they always appeared at dark and terrorized until dawn. I hope you liked that part of Onyx and Ivory and feel free to check it out from the Metuchen Public Library. See you next week. Bye-bye.